was learning a lot because we we have a not similar experiences, but, but we are on the way transforming our society. We also experience, you know, that democratic um, conflict a lot. And we now achieve the democracy society. During that society, we sacrificed a lot of youngsters in, in Korea. So we have a high respectation about the university students, but not now because they are only aiming for the sake of themselves. But the, in the past, they devote themselves to bring the democracy in Korea. So that is the differences between the past and present. So I'm thinking a lot about our society during hearing your, your messages. And we are, we are, I think it was really hectic to achieve some things for the last 70 years. But in your cases, even in the education, you have a certain time to think and reflect and, you know, think about some things in, in, in every sector. I think it brings you peace and happiness in your, in, your, in your society, which we have to really learn. We are accustomed to with an easy and fast, fast going. We are, we are accustomed to with that stance, but I think that is the things we have to really learn, in, even in the education sector. Yeah, that is my feedback. Thank you for your presentation. Good to know more about the Bhutan. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I should say that uh, K-pop is very famous in Bhutan, <laughs> as as in, as in every uh, part of the world, uh, BTS, and you know, and and you know, I think uh, uh, actually uh, following up on what you said that so many good things are happening outside of the school system, you know kids quit school and then they're able to discover their talents and their passions and look at BTS, for instance, they're like the UN goodwill ambassador, you know, and they're raking in even economically so much money to the country. And uh, so I think uh, that really speaks to how we must value our young people and uh, not feel like they don't know anything. And it is very humbling uh, for educators and for uh, teachers uh, to know that there is so much we can learn uh, from our students and from the younger generation. Uh, but I think we really need to uh, come together and be on the same page. And maybe that is the problem. Sometimes we come with our views, they have different needs. And uh, so I think what we need to do is more mindful listening. And again, that's where the mindfulness comes, that that awareness of like, what do we need to pay attention to, you know, that we don't come from just our own, you know, uh, very fixed mindsets, our fixed mindsets of how things ought to be, but really be present, be present in the world, be present, uh, you know, at the dinner table with our families, you know, be present to the conversations that are happening. I think mindful listening, if we did more of that, then I think we will be able to hear each other better, understand each other better, and maybe then, you know, serve each other's needs better as well. So, so for me, I really do feel that this, this, the value of mindfulness, and you know what the pandemic has taught us also is well-being, I think was really uh, uh, at the, at the, receiving end of uh, uh, the difficulties and challenges that the pandemic posed. So it's just telling us more and more about uh, just being aware of the environment, being aware of uh, you know, nature and how to treat nature better, how to appreciate it better and understand that we all coexist. And, and, and that is why uh, it is uh, very humbling, I think, the pandemic did not happen uh, for no reason. I think it, it really happened to teach us a lesson. And if we don't uh, respond to it the way uh, it was intended for us, uh, then I think we may have lost a very big and valuable lesson uh, as well. As, yeah. I would like to ask you, Teki, because the school that you're leading is a, is a private school. Uh, and I know that your government has also all kinds of uh, tests and requirements and exams and, and stuff. So how is the 
public school system with regards to happiness and thriving in Bhutan? Uh, basically, it's, it's not just my school. I think every school was mandated with this vision, but I really do believe that uh, it has to do with uh, uh, the school leadership, uh, how uh, valuable they consider uh, this very, very important concept and philosophy of uh, gross national happiness. Uh, you know, are you serious about it? Otherwise, uh, I have to admit it, we also fall into the same rut of examinations and all of these things. And it's all we can do to really find the time because these things are so valuable. So, uh, you know, it is not just about, uh, you know, and Su Yang talked about uh, uh, real world experiences. And I really believe in that that children are given opportunities for authentic learning experiences where they can really feel. It's not about telling a story, a sad story, and how did you feel you know, when the character died? But it is like going out into the real world and going to uh, uh, hospitals and uh, engaging with the kidney patients, for instance, understanding what their life circumstances are. And I feel like that is the best way to teach empathy to our children is when they engage in the real world. So we have rural urban school partnerships. And uh, so, uh, so when our children go into these schools and when they see that uh, they don't have as much as uh, you know, our students have, uh, I really do feel that children then learn the meaning of gratitude. So otherwise, you know, it's like, I want more, more. I want the latest this, that, you know, uh, from my parents who are always giving me. But when they see kids without shoes and then they say, oh my God, I didn't realize I have, it so good. And, and, and I think if you don't take them outside of the classrooms, if you don't let them engage in the real world. So we also have a lot of uh, community partnerships with the civil society organizations like the, uh, animals uh, welfare group, uh, then also, you know, uh, children who are, uh, you know, abandoned, and they have uh, organizations that look after them. And I think it's only when they see uh, for themselves that they really understand. Otherwise, you know, sitting in the classroom and teaching them, you have to be responsible, you have to be kind, you have to be good. Uh, you know, you can say that till the cows come home, but uh, it's not... Uh, they're not buying it, uh, but if they, you know, and so we're on these journeys, we've actually seen our children cry. And, and I think that is when you know that uh, their hearts are being touched and, uh, and, and that they can uh, be a force of good uh, when they grow up. Uh, yeah, uh, there, there's so many things actually, but I don't know, uh, but definitely I really feel like Mindfulness is at the core of everything. It is, it is at the core of everything. When your awareness, uh, uh, you know, uh, is built, then uh, you're able to recognize so many things uh, for what it is, for what they are. One thing, Deki, that you told me was that uh, you also have uh, a cultural heritage and some rituals and traditional. Um, manners and culture integrated into your, your school week or program. Maybe you could share a little bit of that because I find that highly interesting, particularly in a small country that is surrounded by two, actually the most, the biggest countries with regards to, uh, to population, China and India. Um, uh, so, you know, like I said, uh, uh, we, we are really blessed, uh, you know, for a very small country like Bhutan, you know, under a million in population and, you know, barely uh, uh, 40,000 square kilometers in uh, area. And, and then to be wedged between two very powerful influential nations and to never be colonized, you know? And, uh, and then in the hundred years of monarchy, I think uh, we really learned uh, about uh, uh, self-determination and, and uh, you know, and, and being grateful for the sovereignty that, that we, we uh, are able to uh, 
exercise, you know? And uh, so that is why identity is so important. You know, this country like Bhutan can just get sucked in, you know, culturally, economically, in every which way, politically. Uh, so the identity to understand who we are and where we come from and to respect, uh, you know, our rich uh, traditional culture and heritage. Uh, I think, you know, we are predominantly a Buddhist country, but I think, uh, you know, Buddhist values have become so universal now. So I think uh, we have our own dress code. We have, our, you know, the children wear school uniforms, which are our traditional wear. And uh, uh, our languages, you know, we have an official language, but we have so many different vernacular dialects. Our food uh, is very rich. And I should just say, chili in Bhutan is not a spice. It is actually a vegetable <laughs> and uh, we love our chilies. And uh, so all of these things, you know, and we have so many festivals and we have so many folklore and we have so many national holidays celebrating different spiritual deities and, you know, and, and uh, uh, legendary figures. Uh, uh, and, and, you know, so it's like, a living culture, Bhutan is like a living culture, really. It is not just something that is locked in the past. Even though we ourselves, you know, I mean, just me, you know, I'm uh, uh, my generation alone. Uh, I grew up uh, with no indoor plumbing, with no electricity, no motorable roads for transportation. And now here we are, you know, with a cell phone in our hands and, you know, and connect and understand what building is all of this it's, it's incredible to me you know when i just look at myself you know and then for our children you know if they are just going to be sucked in in this social media world they're never going to know about their rich heritage and their rich past and and which gives them that unique identity i think it is not also like you know it's not only contributing to our own sense of uh, you know posterity but i think it is also a contribution to the world heritage you know that bhutan can contribute to the diversity uh, that is uh, the world you know uh, on this planet so so that is also you know in that spark period you know we have that one where we are able to honor these things and uh, and uh, you know the prayers that we recite and the songs that we sing and what they've meant and the dances, you know, uh, it is quite amazing. And it feels that it is so important to preserve these things, even as we embrace uh, the cultures of the world and, and appreciate them and acknowledge them, but also to not forget our own. And uh, yeah, so Suya, so yeah, uh, maybe our Bhutanese kids sometimes are more fascinated by Korean pop bands. And uh, so sometimes you have to say, you have to learn the Bhutanese songs, the traditional songs as well. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so that's... Hmm. Yeah. What is, how is it like with the, with the traditional culture in, in Korea, in the Korean schools? Actually, no, I mean, becoming industrialization, we experienced that industrialization in our um, generations. I think we only keep a few things about our traditional things. We are trying to mix the westernized things <laughs> into the tra traditional things. So that is really important what um, Deki said that, uh, you know, our identities from coming from our cultures and our traditional, but we experience so many transition in our generation. So we feel like uh, <clears throat> we, we feel we really proud of ourselves as a Korean, but on the other hand, we are trying to follow the Western and American things a lot. So in that process, I think we are a little bit losing our own identity as a Korean, what we really preserve and what our strength as a Korean. So that's why education is really important. We could see that we have a huge potential of in, in ourselves, as, as you can see that. <laughs> K-pop and everything's in filming dramas and making that kind of cultures. But we still skeptical about our strength. That is the problem. So I think that is because of our root is really weak because that, that is coming from our traditional, but we are, as you're saying that we are 
dominated by the Japan. It's a huge world. 70 years ago, we have still separate from North Korea. So we are still trying to find who we are, especially for the Korean people, Korean um, teenagers. They, they, are, they are really having a difficulty with handling that identification of what Korean asset and what is the Korean treasure things. So yeah, that, so I think your comments are really important, uh, especially for the teenagers. They are they are shaping their identification identity in during that ages, right? But if they cannot find the, their identification in a right way, then the effects on whole whole you know rest of their life. Um, so so I have a, a question for you, So Young. Uh, among the cultural uh, successes from Korea. Uh, there's that TV show, and I forgot the name, but it's a game something. Um, and it's, it's Squid really grim. Game. Squid Game. That's it. Uh, it's, game. it's a, it's a really grim setup, <clears throat> and I and I, I wonder. I mean, all the, you know, the dark sides of uh, Korea that you showed us in, in those graphics. Uh, do you see a connection there between creating this global success with the Squid Game, and having all these depressed young people? Well, um, to be honest, I don't like Squid Game at all, and many I parents not, not allow our children to. <laughs> many, many, many <clears throat> parents not allow our children to watch that uh, films, but yeah, we we have that dark side, but that that is not all, because because uh, I think Korean people know how to stimulate people in the best way. <laughs> Or bring the attention from others to, by making that kind of films. That is my opinion. Yeah, we have that darker side, of course, in our school system. That's why I feeling really, you know, urgent. We have to do some things because not many Korean students are happy, and because of the education system, they are too competitive. Then they are enforced by the adult to become more competitive, and you have to be, you know, uh, compete with your friends. To become a number top one so so that that cultures are of course we have that kind of cultures in ourselves but that is not only not the only one so we have a good things in of course in our our school system uh, uh, and we trying to reform the education system right now in a good way and so many many government people are now realize that okay we should do some things for next generation we shouldn't make them more any more painful because of the system yeah <laughs> so you know, too, I think it is too ultimate side in some side. We are not like that. <laughs>